and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host, Ian Duncan. My pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing Sunny Takase in our wasteland adventure here. Joined with me today, also in this post-apocalyptic environment, is a friend of the show, friend to me, and friend to you, Xavier Trudeau Deschen. Hello, friends. This is Xavier. My pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing the vault dweller known as Lance Burnett. Hello, friend. It's good to have you. It's good to have friends, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, friend. Also, you can't spell friend without her. Susan Spinader. I, I think you can, <laughs> but... I'm glad to be a friend. I'm Susan, I go by she, her, and I'll be playing the uh, Wasteland Survivor, uh, Jerry. I think there's gotta be a language where friend is spelled with the letters of your name <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> We're not exclusive to English here. There's gotta be a language. <laughs> we'll find it somewhere. Uh, listeners, write in, <laughs> <laughs> if you know it. <laughs> and friend to few, but Overseer to all. Alex Herrera. Hello. I am Alex. He, him. I'm the overseer for our adventure in the Evergreen. I, I am so excited to hear what you have planned for us. You want to drop us any hints? You want to give us any previews? Give us an amuse-bouche? Uh, well, we're going to start with a flashback. Oh, a flashback. Yes, sir. Um, we will do a Lance flashback today. And then we got, uh, you guys got some, uh... Say no more! Don't give too much away! Don't give too much away! Instead, let's just jump right in, and Alex, please, take us away into the wasteland. Vault Dweller was standing in a small yet cozy coastal home. The decor seemed fitting for this place. Some pre-war nautical items hanging on the wall, a net with hollowed out baby Mirelert shells hanging inside of it. A sense of pride filled Lance for a split second as he caught his reflection in the large standing mirror in the corner of the room. Wearing the standard gear all resource acquisition team members, or rats, are usually assigned. Lance's gear showed signs of wear and tear, however, and his mind carried some scars with it as well. Lance and his two teammates had been on the wasteland for a total of 30 hours before reaching the modest-sized settlement of Island Town, but in that time, they had run into a problem. Actually, it was more like five very angry, hungry problems that managed to injure one of his teammates. Now in Island Town, Lance was face to face with someone who believed was dead. Someone he mourned for over two years. Someone that helped look out for him while they both grew up in the vault. Someone that Lance considered a hero amongst everyone else in his life. Someone that could do no wrong and always represented the right way of doing things. But right now, Lance saw him as something else. A coward. Uh, Lance, you are standing in this small coastal home. In front of you, on this sofa directly across, is this very young African-American dude, very buff, similar to you. You guys both look like athletes. Um, he's not wearing a rat gear. He is wearing a semi-tattered vault jumpsuit that appears to have some sort of attachments in terms of protection, like a leather augmentation on the shoulder, some kind of nautical or like seashell-themed bracelet, almost as like if someone made it for him on his other hand. Um, he has none of his weapons on him. He just looks like he's just at home relaxing. Um, and you can hear the muffled calls and sounds of seagulls and water uh, calling out from the, uh, the massive lake of Lake Washington outside. Uh, but other than that, there are also generators humming consistently. And sometimes you can hear people talking in the nearby buildings. It forms this kind of orchestra of sounds that are new to lands and kind of almost overwhelming at times. <laughs> you know... When the guys told me more rats had made it to the settlement, I, I never expected you to be one of them. As he looks up at you, almost, you know, his eyes welling with tears, almost as if overjoyed. I wasn't expecting to see you here either. 
You you got to tell me how 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 did you manage to survive all this time? Well, I mean, I'm sure some of the folks outside told you, but uh, Island Town has got a soft spot for vault dwellers. Yeah, myself and a few others of the past included. Look, it's a blessing, Lance. We should celebrate, all right? This isn't something that happens all the time. This is rare. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me you don't have a story for me? You, you spent two years out here while everybody back at the vault mourns you? And has been grieving. I've been grieving with your parents for two years. I've met with them several times. They still refuse to make you a funeral because they cling to the belief that you're still out there. And you are. You can come back with me. Brock, I'll, I'll put a word in for you to, uh, with the overseer. Brock kind of shifts his weight a little while still on the sofa. Oh, no. The vault didn't need me, Lance. The people out here, they need everything so much more. And we can help them. I can help them. That's kind of why I stayed. Well, he points to the hallway behind you, aside you know, from the obvious. It, look, I can do so much more out here. You, all of us, can do so much more out here if we just... If we just try to help out. How can you do anything for the vault? Out here. That's why you've been entrusted. That's why we've been entrusted. These tasks. And people are waiting for us to come back. We're, we're hope for them over there. We have to find whatever old tech we can and bring it back home. This place, this place is a hellscape with grotesque people in it. Lance, everything they taught us about the vault, about serving it with all of our lives, it's all garbage, malarkey. Our survival doesn't depend on some hole in the ground. That's temporary. It needs us to explore and to help out our fellow neighbors. It's not about hiding in the ground anymore, Lance. It's bigger than that. All right, there are good people out there. A lot of good people. There are places like this, Island Town. There's First Hill on the north. You got other places out there full of hope. I can't do much good in there, and I'm sorry I had to go this way, but... That's kind of the unspoken rule of the rats. If you want to stay out here, it's not a big deal. It's a code. Excuse me, Brock. The code of the rats? You're telling me Tuco out there knows about this? You're telling me he kept his mouth shut to protect your ass and everybody else's ass that stayed out here like cowards because they can't bother going back to their families and, and, and the... the our, our whole society back in the vault just because your minds got irradiated and somehow people out, out here with three uh, three arms are more uh, important than look at us we're perfect we need to stick together otherwise we'll just we'll he kind of like gestures to his house we'll turn into them brock stands up from the sofa uh, it's very clear now who is the upperclassman as he stands a good, I want to say maybe half a foot taller than you. Lance. I have a family. Okay. I know my parents back home mourn for me. That's fine. They dictated every step of my life. And it wasn't until I came out of here and really learned what it's all about that I decided they weren't my family. Uh, as he says this, a woman kind of comes out from the hallway carrying an infant, probably a few months old, maybe like almost like nine to eight months old. And she's got the baby um, and she looks up or looks, comes in between both Brock and Lance and looks at them, looks at, at Brock. Is everything OK? And he nods. Everything's fine. Lance was just leaving. Yeah, Lance crosses his arms and starts kind of like pacing in the living room. Kind of nods at that. Uh, he picks his stuff. And uh, he starts heading towards the door and turns back around. Your secret is safe. All right. But I'm going to tell your parents. I found proof that you died a coward's death. And you're never coming back. He'll, he'll nod. Kind of slowly. While holding his wife, assumedly. Or mother of his child. And... 
as Lance turns to exit, Brock calls out, You want to know what I named my son? Don't do this to me. His name is Lance. He's named after a great man I knew in the hopes that maybe one day he'd grow up to get a fraction of his heart or determination. And before he can say anything else, the woman puts her hand on his mouth and shakes. Stop. She looks at Lance. The, the woman looks at Lance and says, she puts her hands up like, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you doing everything you can to ensure that my husband stays with us. Family is important. And he looks at little Lance. Little Lance, I also looked up to your dad. He was my hero too. I gave up everything to be like him. So I'm going to head out there and do good. And he just leaves. As Lance exits the home, there are two men in similar clothing to him sitting nearby on an overturned uh, like concrete slab nearby that's been made into some makeshift bench. Uh, one of them is, it looks like a Latinx gentleman. He's got a darker skin, uh, short black hair, sitting there with his helmet off. The other one is a much older white male, uh, a little skinnier than both the uh, Lance and the gentleman sitting there. But all three of them are very, very good looking. They're all handsome. Uh, very well manicured except for small patches of uh, dirt and like some scrub or some scruff from being out in the wilderness for 30 plus hours. The young one, Tuco, stands up. Uh, how did it go? Well, you like the place? Do you want to stay? Because I'm taking my things and I'm leaving right now. I'm going to take the Evergreen Point Bridge, make my way across the water, find what we came out here to get. I'm going to get my ass back to the vault and do my damn job. Tuco and Philip, who is the older white male with them, with the group, look at each other, then look back to Lance. Uh, you know, Lance, this place could use a good doctor, and... I mean, why not stay for just a while? Tuco speaks up. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can plan on leaving, but, like, if you do, you might as well hire some mercenaries, Lance. I mean, no offense, but you and a gun, uh, it doesn't mix. Lance seems to be looking for his words uh, and he they can't come out and you can see his fist clench and they kind of like start shaking like he's holding both arms straight down at his sides and you can see his fist starting to shake a bit Philip speaks up hey <laughs> look you caught us Lance okay we're gonna stay we knew Brock was out here at least I did don't blame Tuco for any of this I knew what I was getting myself into when I came out of here. This is my third tour. Um, I, I don't have much left for me back in the vault. It's better out here for a lot of reasons. And I'm not going to hold it against you if you go back. Like, we respect that, but we... We really think you could do some good out here. The place could use a doctor. I mean, you saw half the things we saw. Tuco speaks up. Yeah, Lance, come on, man. Like... We want to stay, but we don't want to stay if you're not going to stay, man. I mean, this this is us. Come on. I came here to do a job. You want me to do good? I'm going to I'm gonna do good on my job. I'm going to go back to the vault. I'm going to help the people I set out to help. I can't abandon them. They both nod, looking at each other and back to Lance. Yeah, yeah Philip speaks up. I, I kind of figured that's where you'd land, but look, just be careful, okay? Those rat things that we saw that's the least of the problems out here Tuco nuts yeah here he hands over extra bullets to Lance yeah all right maybe I'm not that good of a shot but hey if I keep firing maybe I'll hit something they both chuckle hey I, I hope you two get laid a lot all the time uh, have a happy life I loved you um you won't be seeing me again. Lance leaves the small home and its tiny neighborhood. He steps out into the hustle of Island Town's main thoroughfare as the crowd begins to swell. His mind and senses are constantly under assault from all this new. The new sounds, the people, the birds, the occasional pop and distance of machinery, 
and the smells. The smells are something else entirely. Still, moving through the busy and now crowded and choking Market Street, Lance struggles to find a place for himself to keep it together. He finds a small alley. Lance ducks in, presses his back against the steel and concrete housing unit and slowly slides down until he's sitting on the ground. Tears welling and overflowing in his eyes, the rage burning behind his eyes and in his stomach. Lance remembers this emotion, all too familiar, and quickly tries to bury it, placing his gloved hands into his hair, gritting his teeth as he fights back the emotion as best as he can. An image pops into his mind. There is a floor made entirely of ice, lines painted in some sort of organized manner. Then the ice, the very same one in his mind, quickly becomes stained with blood. Lance begins to breathe faster and faster. He quickly punches a metal pre-war receptacle that is not too far from him. Lance punches the object so hard that it goes flying out into the busy street and slams onto the ground. A few passerbys are shocked and quickly scoot along. Lance's breath returns to normal and gives him back his calm. He stands up, adjusts his clothing in an orderly fashion, just as he likes it. But Brock's words still hung in his mind. The people out here need me. Lance feels there was some truth to this, but doesn't want to admit it. Still wincing from the betrayal of his fellow rats, Lance leaves the alley. The vault dweller now sees the western exit out of Island Town and decides to continue his mission of finding a way of serving the vault, but on his terms. As Lance walks through the gate and tightens his rat attachments to his vault suit, he remembers why he left. The memories of the bloodstains sprayed across the ice floor. That's one reason. He remembers a man who could barely hold his hands up to try and stop him as the crowd cleared in fear, knowing full well what this young man was going to do to him. Although these things levied their way into helping him make a decision to leave, he knew that this wasn't him. He prayed that this wasn't him. God did he hope that this was not him. The home computer Irma. Irma has been kind enough to tell you you have 15 seconds to leave because she's alerted members of the cause who are located within the settlement. This has further complicated things. Uh, knowing that this woman, Kareen, was involved with the cause, it's not going to make the job of finding V any easier. As you were escaping and Sunny found the handgun, ammunition, and some sort of journal, he did manage to flip to a page that was dog-eared uh, and it had notes on, it had names and notes next to them, one of them being Marcos Ubeda, and it says Marcos has been compromised underneath as a bullet point. Uh, there are at least six or seven other names on this page. I won't go into too much detail about the book as you don't have time to read it beyond that because you are escaping. So I need you guys to describe to me where are you going? How are you getting out of this house? Yeah, there was a back door that Sunny was like, we should go this way, and then... I think once we get outside, maybe we'll be sneaky, but we're getting out of the house as quickly as possible. Easy enough, okay. So you're located on the northeastern edge of the settlement. Up in this area, there's not a lot of cover. So once you leave the home, it's like, imagine a cul-de-sac, but with, what did I say, half a dozen homes. So there's six of these homes of the future, some of which have been boarded up. This one obviously was one that was in use beforehand. There's nothing in the street except for maybe destroyed vehicles from the pre-war era but they don't have kind of the top. It's just like the body or the chassis of the vehicles. You all get out of the home easily. You can hear Irma in the background counting. 10, nine. And as the door, this I would say like the kitchen door is a screen door. As it slams behind you, you can hear her voice coming out of that door as you're now, I believe, full sprinting out of the, like you're out in the open, you're full sprinting, or are you trying to duck and dodge behind these wrecked vehicles? If there's no cover at all, because I was picturing it to be kind of like a, residential district but yeah if it's just an empty 
cul-de-sac probably try to duck behind a, a, a an old car okay. yeah all of you are doing this and we do like the doop 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 <laughs> Sco- scooby doo lance uh, jerry just g- g- come on get up just keep going act natural just keep walking slow all right boss We'll just go up around here, and we'll just come out the other side, and no one will even think. Just keep walking. Come on, follow me. Just keep going. And Sonny just keeps, like, like when they cheese it out of the house, he's, like, slowed his pace to just sort of like a... Like a jaunt. Uh, like, a, like a walk. Yeah, like a jaunty walk, and is walking away from the house. Lance grabs his brass knuckles in his uh, suit pocket, and, like, palms them, kind of like hides them inside his fists for the moment as a precaution. Jerry uh, pops up from behind a car she was hiding behind <laughs> and Jerry, starts walking. Jerry, <laughs> come over here. Just walk. There was a complication. I believe that was rolling. I didn't have a chance to use it. Your failure to hack the computer was the biggest complication that could possibly happen. Um, so you did it to yourselves. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. As you're jaunting down this main road that leads out of the vault homes of the future cul-de-sac. Mm, I, I, l- let me get a perception... Perception... Survival from each of you, please. Ooh, yeah, first see First roll of the night! <laughs> Respect the crit! Oh no! Well, same, yeah, same well, here. Lance Burnett! I got a success, though. Oh, two successes! Ooh, uh, survival is my tag skill, so I also generated two successes. Well, la di da. <laughs> Lance got a success, but also gave me a complication. I Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of you would see this right away as you're walking down the street. All of you spot three silhouettes. Three silhouettes walking towards you, not at a fast pace, but a normal kind of patrol pace outlined by the fires from the garbage bin lighting or the garbage bin torch flames or pit flames, whatever you want to call it, that are spread across certain parts of the street. Uh, These three figures are wearing clothes similar to what you saw that one big guard wear earlier. Bernard, I believe his name was. These three gentlemen are decked out. They have their helmets on. Uh, They have their weapons holstered. They see you three. One of them kind of puts a hand up to acknowledge he sees you. Excuse me! And he'll tap something on his shoulder, some sort of very heavily jerry-rigged shoulder-mounted light shines uh, on all three of you, kind of just as he moves it around, pointing it towards you three. Hey! How's it going? Uh, evening, uh... Doing well. Uh, a little bright, though. Thank you. How how are you doing tonight? Now the three kind of close in. One, the one with the light talks, is talking directly to you. The other two go around to your flanks. I'll be asking the questions here. I mean, I was just asking how you were doing. You can't really see his eye. Think of like the Judge Dread helmets. You can't see their eyes entirely. You can see from the no- like the lower nose down. Where are you guys coming from? Oh, uh, actually, we're a little lost. We're, we're new in town. We're looking for the bottle house, uh, and I think we got turned around. I don't know. Maybe you can point us in the right direction. The officer, security officer, looks to one of his partners. Uh, the one I would say that's encircling uh, our complication master, Lance Burnett. <laughs> sees don't him. Call me that. Looks. <laughs> looks. You got a new title. <laughs> looks. <laughs> yeah. He looks at Lance, looks at the direction from where you came, and unfortunately sees or can hear in the distance. I have one, my <laughs> that was a loud fucking computer. <laughs> well, it is very obnoxious. I don't know if you remember. It basically said you have 15 seconds, and it lied. It was like you don't have it. it you don't have 15 seconds. Uh, the guy, the officer that was, I would say, on your right side. So near Lance, takes a few steps, now is behind the party. All of you can hear the distinct sound of a button unclick, unclipping. Uh, The one to your side, Sonny, does the same. You see him unclip his holster 
and the one in front now is kind of looking at everybody. Okay. Well, they are armed. And you hear the one closest to Lance kind of snicker and <laughs> I've never had a shootout with a vault dweller before. The one next to Sunny is like, well, they won't mind a ghoul and some scroungers missing. And they're going to I'm draw I'm sorry. Their, they're going to draw their weapons. <laughs> These guys suck. I don't like them. They're bad men. These are bad bastard men. <laughs> bad bastard men. <laughs> One of the the one facing, I would say the one in front is going to go after Jerry, and he's going to try an unarmed strike, Jerry. Wow, pick on the little girl, why don't you? <laughs> Bastards. That oh, it's a big miss and a hit. The we'll call him Officer One or U Pro Guard One punches Jerry in the right leg. Ooh. Okay, so you take one damage total as he. Poof, Tries to he tries to do some kind of like fake martial arts move where he hits your basically trying to break your knee. Whoa, hey! The one <laughs> next to Lance, he is going to try and shoot you. That could kill me. <laughs> uh, those both hit, and one of them is a crit. This is at this is at your torso. That's where my heart is. <laughs> <laughs> two physical damage to your torso. Do you have any damage resistance, my friend? No, I do not. So you take the full two as you <laughs> take a slug right in the gut. <laughs> Uh, the third Ooh, one. I'll give, you, uh, uh, I'll give you a few. Uh, uh, there you go. You call this protected serve? Uh, the one looking at you, Sonny, when you says that, says, <laughs> yeah. And he hits you as well. Left arm, one physical damage. Sonny, do you have any damage resistance? Left arm, I've got one physical oh. uh, damage resistance. <laughs> The bullet scrapes off. It just it just breezes or brushes off the leather, leaving a nice scorch mark where the bullet went. <laughs> Jerry, yeah. Somebody punched you in the leg. You're up. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Wow. wow. <laughs> You're in the middle of a street. Behind you, which would be north, is the cul-de-sac. Uh, so you're probably a good. That's another. I would say that's another zone. You're like one zone away from the cul-de-sac area. There are three decrepit vehicles in the cul-de-sac. There are buildings on your left and right. There are a total of four of those trash cans with fires in them to act as light. And in the zone beyond is where the bottle house uh, would be, where there's more of the active. Uh, active hubs of the community, but it is nighttime, so everything is kind of desolate to a degree. I have quick draw, so I don't have to take a minor action to pull out my gun. And I also have fast shot, so I could take two shots. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Those are it. Right leg, left yeah. leg. Oh my god. <laughs> you go for my legs, <laughs> I go for yours. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So we'll do right leg first. Go ahead and roll your combat die, please. Also, this is the powerful pistol, right? Yes. You automatically do two extra uh, damage dice when you hit. Ooh. Those poor legs. Four damage off this first shot. <laughs> and the that's the right leg. <laughs> okay, he does have some armor, obviously, because he is... Uh, Wearing some armor, so you do a total of trace. Okay. Four again. Oh my god! And this is the left leg. Same thing again. Oh god. Okay. Well, if there was a term for bloodied, <laughs> that's what he would be. <laughs> and then uh, I still have a minor action. I would like it to move. <laughs> sure. Where are you going? Uh, wherever I could get cover, I guess. So behind a car, maybe. Or on top of a car? The cars would be back a zone behind you, which I think movement allows you to get there, if I'm not mistaken. It allows me to move one zone. Yep, it's, it's one zone behind you. And then uh, she'll say fuck you as she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry gets punched in the leg. She takes out quickly, quick draw, her powerful pipe gun. <laughs> Pops him twice, one in each leg. <gasps> and flips him off and runs behind a car. <laughs> <laughs> All in the span of six seconds. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Where's Jerry? <laughs> Sonny, this man tried to shoot you in the arm, 
and failed. Okay, so minor action, I'm gonna take out this t this 10 millimeter pistol and be like, what the fuck is this? This is not, this is not due process. And like, he's gonna pull a gun out because guns are happening. But he's like, let's just everyone calm the fuck down. What's going on here? This will be a test. Uh, charisma speech. DC of three. Okay. <laughs> a little tougher. So I got to beat a 12. I am going to spend an action point to get three dice. Uh, spent. Here we go. Hey. Dang it. That's a crit for me. And on this show, we respect the crit. You have the gun. You have the gun pointed at this you pro officer. Uh, and you're, hey, what the fuck? Uh, he's not going to answer. As a matter of fact, your complication is that from one of the rooftops of the buildings nearby, there is a woman standing on, like, maybe attending some sort of small garden she has up there. Oh my god, they're shooting at the officers! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, now we're gonna have to kill her too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put her on the map, on my little map here. <laughs> so that I know. Oh my god! Man, get back inside! <laughs> oh my- Stop shooting! There are people sleeping! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh, that's what she's concerned about. Ultimately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the you pro guard time, baby. The one next to Lance, uh, after shooting him and seeing that he's like standing there and nothing really affected him, uh, he's gonna try and, while with his empty hand, punch. One success. That's all you need for damage. Oh no. <laughs> to <laughs> the right leg. It's just going for our legs. I'm at half HP. This punch, you hear a small fracture or something or sprain. <laughs> It's it's severe. Let me give you some folly again. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Give us uh, give us some efforts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, wait, that's that wasn't my voice. Yeah. There you, go. Okay, there you, go. <laughs> you better not be hitting his face. I'll fucking kill you. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, stop with the bad words, ma'am. Get back inside. <laughs> Jerry, the guy he shot is he's not looking good. So he will, technically this gun can hit you from where he is, but he's going to move uh, into the same zone as you. The car gives you cover. I'm going to say it gives you two damage dice of cover. You get to roll two combat dice and add that to your damage resistance for the attack. Oh, okay. Two successes, which means it goes to two damage resistance. Uh, he misses anyway, so it doesn't matter. Ha. <coughs> Bullet goes wild. You can hear it, like, whiz past you. You see a metal finger come up again. Just all the... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely useless. See, this is why we need to defund and abolish the police. Because they are just <laughs> fucking totally useless. Especially you, pro. You, pro. <laughs> well, yeah, you speak pro. for yourself. I'm dying over here. <laughs> Very efficient at their job. Uh, uh, Acting killing as intended. Isn't. Yeah, yeah. killing isn't... Uh, killing, I guess. The last you, pro guard is going to take another shot at Sunny. Oh, I missed again. So this guy, I would say, takes the second shot. I'm going to add a little flavor that Sunny kind of just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. turns sideways. Yeah, turn sideways. Gun Fu, Christian Bale. <laughs> the bullet strikes up the, one of the brick wall of the building behind uh, Lance and Sunny on the other side. <laughs> not the first time someone shot at me, dickhead. He's very shocked that this is not working. Lance, you're up. Lance got shot. Uh, the first time it hurt like all hell he put his hand on the wound and it only takes a microsecond for him to assess that the moon is not critical and then he gets punched so it's kind of like this combo of of pain uh and he looks at the blood the blood on his own hand and uh, his adrenaline rush perk uh, activates uh, and when my health is below my maximum value, I count my strength score as a 10 for all purposes when attempting a strength-based strength -based skill test or melee attack. I would say after the punch, the pain is immense to the point where Lance remembers 
the final goal being scored against his team in the Vault Hockey League. It was one of the first times where Lance had experience lost in a situation that he could not control, or at least one that had this much weight and momentum behind it, something that was valuable both emotionally and physically to him. It brings up a familiar friend of rage, something that he has attempted to suppress throughout his life, buried deep, deep by years of just practice, breathing, training. But in this instance, when the final, the final goal was scored against him and his team and he could do nothing, Lance threw his hockey stick to the ground, removed his hockey gloves, skated across, almost like a, a man possessed. And as the captain of the opposite team turns around and believes he's getting the traditional handshake at the end of the match, gets his forearm and wrist grabbed, pulled towards him. Lance headbutts him. The man falls to the ground. Lance mounts on top of him, putting his own forearm into the throat of the other captain and wailing on him with punch after punch with the opposite unused arm continuously until teeth and blood scatter across the ice. Lance, seething with rage as he holds his leg and looks up at the UPRO guard in front of him, almost as if the UPRO guard is, is face to face with Lance but is in his mind for a split second believes he's face to face with a wild animal. And with that, Lance, it is your turn. He's locked in here with me. As he's briefly reliving this hockey sports moment in his mind, he rears back his left uh, fist and focuses in on the other guy. And that's the only thing he sees. Everything else is red. And he throws that punch. using the minor action to aim. Now that my strength score is 10, my melee damage modifier is plus two, which means uh, I'm at uh, five dice oh my for God. the brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You're doing some gun damage. <laughs> gun damage, well, yeah, I got two big guns <laughs> and they don't need no ammo. Oh. <laughs> uh, target a 14 and it is a tag skill. <sighs> That's one. That's one. That's a hit. That's, That's all you needed. Okay. Let's do the one. So 5d6. Five five six. Six. Oh my god. Roll it. That's five damage. That's a critical hit. Yes. Where did I punch him? You gotta roll. <laughs> so here's the thing. There's only one spot on these guys that's not armored. So roll a d20 and hope you get it. It would be their head. And that is not the head. That is a torso. So you're five. After damage, resistance is reduced to four. Hey, I'm gonna use our two action points action points to throw the right fist at him. Right, like, yeah. boom, boom. Two punch combo. Roll it. Yay. Go ahead and roll your damage, my friend. Oh my <laughs> god. Ooh. Six damage. <laughs> I think you just critical. <laughs> He's right-handed, injured I guess. Him. So roll d20 to figure out where you hit him. <laughs> it's the same play. Same leg. <laughs> 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 so. Oof. The first hit, left punch. Uh, he, gro- he, he groans to go down and grab it, and by the time he looks up, he sees the other fist coming, and that's when I'm gonna say you snap his leg. He has one HP left, but I'm gonna say that because that that was like you gave him an injury, like he's done. He's for all intents and purposes, number two is out of combat. All right, and immediately Lance just turns around to whichever other is closest to him and lunges. That would be the one shooting at, at Sunny. It's basically Lance he seething and heaving over this now downed U-Pro security officer just oh, oh god he's a maniac and then he just turns around and sees the one trying to shoot at Sunny's head he's like hey come on like doing a little side dodging left to right um, yeah. but that was a hell of a turn Lance. Thank you. I'm glad Jerry. You- matched the flashback. <laughs> it, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Jerry, it is your turn. The gentleman is on the other side of the car that you are hiding behind. So it is now a straight out like time crisis game where you're both stepping on the pedal shooting going down. I will shoot my gun. Okay. He has cover now as well, by the way. Same cover you have. No, I missed. I, I, wait, that's a complication. I can do something with your gun. Oh no, no, not my gun. <laughs> your gun is now really greasy. It's really gross. <laughs> oh, Don't oh, that happen. Right. Gross. <laughs> oh. 
Don't eat nachos near your gun, Jerry. What the fuck? <laughs> they were so good. <laughs> Stop eating street nachos. <laughs> In the middle of a gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be good. Again, there's a whole table for these. <laughs> Jerry, can you roll 1d4 for me, please? All right, I guess. One. Okay, you fired more shots than you wanted to. You lose an additional ammo, another bullet of ammunition. Okay. Uh, Sunny, you're up, my friend. Talking didn't work, and now someone is yelling and creating a, a scene, so these people need to go down fast, and it's clear that they are intending this to be lethal. So Sunny is going to take aim with this 10 millimeter pistol at the uh, officer that's shooting at him and try and fire. So I'm looking for a 10. I got a success. So I'll spend two ammo to add uh, additional damage dice. Here we go. Four, five. Five, and go ahead and roll a d20 to see where you shoot this guy, please. Oh, Ooh. that's that's the head. <laughs> Shh, I was hoping yeah. it was oh, the head. Oh, I was really oh hoping. God. So and Was I critical, too? That's, crit that's five damage, Yeah, You critically oh. injured this guy. <gasps> so the dif difficulty on every test that rely on vision for him is, is en enhanced by two. Luckily, this guy hasn't been touched yet, right? So... It's the first damage that you did to him, but it's you. It's effectively you have him right here. Do I shoot out his eye? You know or what? Very yeah. near to his well, eye. Let's say that like you caught. It's like one of those situations, like the governor from Walking Dead, where the eyeball is like punctured. Like, you just grab it, like the the helmet, the 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 visored part of the helmet just cracks instantly as the gun is pushed pushed up against it. You pull the trigger. It's just blood coming out the other side. It's almost like you'd expect him to fall, but he goes down to like. Maybe he's sitting on his ass at this point. He's like grabbing his face, like, ah! like screaming at the top of his lungs, grabbing his face, like, oh my god, like a like a like a, a tough guy trying not to cry, but he's crying because it's like his eyeballs basically gone. It's rendered useless. Yeah. So I I want it to be that when Sonny like turns to the side, he's like dodging the bullet, but also lining up his shot. So he like turns and just like puts the gun like right up into the guy's face. Uh, looks him in the eye and then pulls the trigger. So cool. So I just look at him and I see Sonny looks him uh, at the, with the blood pouring down and he says, You're done. Effectively, there is one U Pro guard left and he has no idea his buddies are downed. So he's going to continue to fire at Jerry. Uh, Jerry, go ahead and roll the 2D6s for your damage cover. Ooh. Three. That is three. <laughs> I'm going to spend three action points to increase my uh, DF D 20s. That's three successes. But that complication, I'm going to give him a complication. So now it just looks like we beat up some U-Pro officers. <laughs> <laughs> After he does fire the weapon, his gun jams. He needs to use a minor action to fix it. Um, but he will roll his damage. Two. I have one resistance. Where'd he hit? No, get no, me? no. You have oh, yeah. a total of four resistance because of your cover. So the bullet strikes the car. <laughs> He's going to use his minor action to fix his gun. He's going to like, God damn it. Try and fixing it. Try and unclog the jam. Uh, Lance, it's still your turn. The guy you were targeting is now on the ground holding his eyeball. You could attack him if you want. Here's the thing, Lance was already going for him, and as he was running full speed, like in the narrative, not necessarily in round terms, still lunging at him, he sees the shot go off, sees the guy fall on his ass, and lose an eye, and start bleeding and crying. He can't stop himself, he can't stop his momentum, he's gonna lean down on the ground, uh, like, to the guy's height as he's sitting down, grab him by the collar, yank him up with his fist raised, and scream at his face, Now you tell your buddy to stop and you all fuck off, or I'll make sure you lose the other eye and I'll beat your friend with your broken arm. Stop! It's not worth it! He's screaming at the top of his lungs, Stop! Stop! It's not worth it! The one whose leg is shattered into pieces, he just, like, you hear him throw his gun into the middle of the street. Ah! Ah! You don't, he doesn't even acknowledge anything. He just throws his gun in the street. The one that is uh, in the shootout with Jerry finally looks back and sees the horror. Lance, I'm going to need you to give me charisma unarmed. 
<laughs> All right, uh, that's a nine tag skill. Let your fist do the talking. I mean, you're, thre- you're threatening them with your fist, essentially. Yay! Uh, success. Success? Okay, the guy behind the car, he has his, his gun, and, you know, he looks at everything that's happening, he drops it on the ground, kind of far from him, and puts his, puts his hands up, but he's still in a kneeled position behind the hood of the, the, the front of this destroyed and decrepit vehicle. Oh my god! What happened to him? What's going on? I look up at the woman and I go, Don't worry, we handled it, miss. Please, go back to bed. You're safe now. You are all essentially out of combat. Jerry, you're still behind the car. You're still in, like, survival mode. Still holding gun and aimed at this guy. Boss, should I shoot him? Get him to come with us. We need to go somewhere quiet. I look over at Lance and I just go, Jesus Christ, Lance. He looks over back at the guy, you know, like, pushes him back to the ground, places his hand back on his own wound, looks back at Sonny and goes, all right, boss, what was the plan now? Okay, uh, we should probably get out of here uh, real quick. Uh, I'd like to take one of these guys with us and figure out what the fuck is going on. Maybe we can convince him to uh, to not mention this. And if not, well, then we'll have to think of something else. Let's, uh, but let's at least get out of here. Jerry puts her pipe gun to the guy's head on the other side of the car. She walks around. You heard the boss. And she kicks his gun away that he dropped. You're coming with us. He has his hands up. Hey, don't have a choice. And stands up. Wearily, because his legs are bleeding. We gotta take him to a quiet place, huh? Somewhere somewhere we can talk to him. What a qui- what would a quiet pa- a quiet place be for you guys here in this <laughs> in this settlement? There's only you've only visited three locations. You know what you do here though? The sound of boots hidden concrete way way down the road okay th- there is th- it looks like there are farms nearby are they fairly close by there is a farm yeah there's a there are farms nearby okay because maybe we can like pull them into a cornfield or something <laughs> pike's <laughs> point yeah pike's point farm is one of two large sections of farms within the uh, settlement uh, let's do that yeah Okay. Before we walk away, can I pocket one of the 10 millimeter guns? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. it's yours. Uh, as they leave, Lance is a little, stays for a few seconds longer between the other two injured. You hear him just like, uh, uh, and the one is like, oh, fuck my arm. Uh, he takes off his brass knuckles and what, like, tries to wipe the blood, the blood off of him. And he just tells them, When help gets here, get your asses into the infirmary as soon as possible. You'll live. Hello, survivors, vault dwellers, and denizens of the wastes. Thanks for joining me in the mid-roll. Before I announce the winner of our episode 5 giveaway, let me first say thank you again to everyone who entered. Thanks for your wonderful feedback and for engaging with us. It's honestly so encouraging to hear from you, the listeners, and we're really glad you keep coming back and following the show. We'd love to reward you with more free giveaway stuff and cool prizes, so keep looking out for those secret codes we've been dropping, keep submitting your feedback, resubmit your reviews if you didn't win this time, and enter again for another chance to win great stuff. And to the winner of our episode 5 giveaway, who will be receiving a digital copy of the Fallout Core Rulebook, please join me in congratulating Eric! Eric is active in our Discord and wrote us one of the most heartwarming reviews on Apple Podcasts. It just makes me swell with pride and appreciation. Uh, Here it is. Here we go. Amazing. Inspiring. This may be my favorite podcast of all time. Whew. Definitely my favorite tabletop RPG podcast. The Star Wars role-playing system is fueling my 43-year-old love of Star Wars like nothing in the past, to the point of now running a campaign with my five daughters, including my eight-year-old Ewok assassin. 
Few things have brought us closer together. This podcast really inspires the kind of GM I want to be. I can only hope to run a game with the kindness and fun of Ian. Thanks so much for your devotion to quality, your dedication to important issues, and just for who you all are. P.S. I also love Fallout and can't wait to hear how that campaign goes. I am so happy that you have been inspired to run a Star Wars campaign with your family. That is absolutely incredible and makes all the hard work that goes into producing this show 100% worth it. Uh, I sure hope that your eight-year-old isn't listening to the podcast because it may be a little bit adult. Um, but I do hope that you'll share your exploits of your fearless fringers and, of course, your Ewok assassin on our Discord whenever you have a chance because I would love to hear your tabletop stories. Thank you so much, Eric, for that incredible review, for listening, and for entering our giveaway. You'll be getting an email from me and also from Modifius, so look out for that so you can claim your digital copy of the Fallout Core Rulebook. And I hope you get a chance to run your own Wasteland adventure. On to our next giveaway. We've got a physical copy of this incredible RPG for you to win on our next episode. That's right, if you like having a book on your shelf or in your hand flipping through it, looking up rules for modding a power fist or crafting meals for survival in the wasteland, get in the description of this episode or check out our social media for that sweep widget link. This is a beautiful, thick as hell rule book. There's so much in it. We've barely scratched the surface of it in our game. And if you wanna run your own campaign in the Fallout universe, enter to win now. Just like always, no purchase necessary. We've posted a sweep widget link on our social media, in our Discord, and in the description of this episode. Follow that link to submit your email and follow instructions on how to enter to win. You know what to do by now. You just have to log in and complete two entries in order to be qualified. Firstly, visit our custom URL, modifius.net slash respect the crit. Enter to win our giveaway and then check out all the Fallout bundles and gaming tools available to elevate your home game. Modifius even has a US store now, so if you live in the States, you can save some money on shipping. And the second thing you need to do to qualify is go to Apple Podcasts, make sure to follow Respect the Crit, and leave a 5-star rating and review. Screen cap or take a picture of your review and upload it to the Sweep Widget giveaway link that we posted. If you win, we'll read your review on our episode, just like we did with Eric's heartwarming review. And yes, if you've already left a review, snip snap baby, upload it. If you haven't won a giveaway yet, please feel free to enter each time there's a new one. Looking forward to hearing what you think about this episode or any of the other campaigns or stories that we've done and wishing you all the luck to win these cool prizes. Thank you to Modifius Entertainment and thank you for listening, for downloading, and for leaving us your feedback. Now. Let's get back to the evergreen. The party plus one. Begin to sneak through some of the alleyways in between buildings. But eventually, they make their way to a large section of multiple farms all connected. Uh, I assume you three are doing this and taking this gentleman into a field of what looks like large corn stalks. Our party brings the gentleman, the officer, injured officer, into the cornfield with them and I would say after some time uh, finds an area they believe to be the center uh, and what happens then? I, I I nodded Jerry to to stop but keep her gun trained on this dude I like lean away from them and like get up close to Lance and be like whoever that guy was that you just brought out uh, we might need him here okay you're good with that. You can, you know, mm, flex him and stuff. A grunt or not, but if we have to, it's never far. Okay, cool. uh, good, good. I turn around and I go, Ah, uh, oh, what is your name, sir? The gentleman in the Judge Dread helmet looks at you through the helmet. Trevor. My name is Trevor. Trevor, a pleasure to meet you. Let's get this helmet off. I take the helmet off and like, put it down. <laughs> Let's see that pretty face. Nice. Uh, Trevor is a white male in his mid-20s uh, with the helmet off, disheveled brown hair, almost mullet, but not quite there. He has pale blue eyes. Uh, he has some scarring around his chins from either acne or small creatures that have kind of like scratched at him so he's been looks like he's been on the force for some time 
<sighs> Not much to look at, huh? Oh, don't sell yourself short. You uh, smooth skins, you all have this glowy sort of look to all of you. It's uh, 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 it's very dewy. He nods. Thanks. I'm probably going to die because I'm going to bleed out here. So what do you want? Well, uh, I think I can speak for all of us here to say that we don't want to see that happen. And uh, although we do have you at a bit of a disadvantage, uh, we want this to end amicably. Do you understand? (laughs) It doesn't matter what happens to me. I'm one of many. We are everywhere. Jerry says, so fucking cliche. (laughs) He looks up. (laughs) Yeah, but it's true. And he tilts his head. And he looks at the clothes you're wearing. You're not from here. And he kind of looks a little closer. Mm, Nomad. Probably from up north, I guess. Don't know many settlements up there. And then he looks at Lance. I mean, he's got Vault 6 written all over him, literally. He, he looks he looks at Sunny. You know, I've heard about a, a ghoul who travels with a Brahmin in the Evergreen. Specifically one who wears cheap suits. Those suits are not cheap, by the way. <laughs> he kind of slyly snickers and smiles. You know, I do know you. I've seen you before. Two, three years ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, we cut to a flashback of the two men taking the case of weapons with Tobias. <laughs> and one of them, yeah, and then it, one of them instantly has got the brown semi mullet hair, the blue eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I know you. So if you know me and you know what I've done, for the cause. And I, I look at him when I say that. Why are you trying to kill me and my friends? Because my job was to stop anyone from going in that house. It didn't matter who was going in there. That's why I get paid. I'm muscle. I'm not brains like Tobias. So, like I said, doesn't matter what happens to me. Lance produces his uh, first aid kit from the bag. Like, if you don't want to bleed out here, listen to what Sonny has to say. He, with complete disregard, says, <laughs> you don't get it. The stuff in that house was worth more than me. It's way more than me and my buddies. It's worth more than you and your supply drops. The information in that house is very sensitive. Oh, and by the way, Bernard's probably already looking for you three. And he's bringing all of the U-Pro with him. And he looks at he looks at all of you with just this deadpan face like it's over for him. You're assuming an awful lot, I think, first of all. We have the same goals, I think, now that we have come to this understanding and we kind of know who we are. We, we've got our own mission, all right? We're doing our own thing. You don't want to get in trouble with... Bernard, and you don't want to get in trouble with her, right? Oh, I like that. Uh, You mentioned her, and he kind of gets a little serious. By by failing this mission, I'm already in trouble with all of them. Bernard, he doesn't make mistakes. Uh, And I need, let's say Susan. Susan, can you give me a d20 roll, please? Oh. Looking for low low numbers, low numbers. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, eleven. Eleven's fair. He continues. I don't know what your mission is. We're not aligned. No one's supposed to go in that house, regardless of who they work for, because it belongs to somebody, and she's not here right now. She's on assignment. Meaning, if anyone goes in there. They're trying to take something. I, I, I like chuckle at him and I go, who do you think told us to go in the house? Nobody I know. Unless you know her. 
So he's not sure if you're lying to him or not. So I'm going to need perception. Let's call it perception sneak because you're trying to be very sneaky with. Or sorry, charisma sneak because you're trying to be sneaky with your words. Charisma sneak. Okay. Difficulty. This is this is this is two. Two. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I buy an action point? <laughs> you giving me one too? Yeah, yeah, I've got to. We've got no action points. All right, you do it, and then you're using it, I assume. Yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna roll this. I gotta, I gotta hit a ten, and I gotta get two. <laughs> Boom. BB. Yeah. Just, hey, we get one back. And we get one back. He will kind of back off a little. Uh, there's no way. That's impossible. So now your job is different now. You have to make this okay. You have to smooth this over. That's where you come in about this. With your guys who are hurt and your uh, cell leader, you got to make it okay. Tell them whatever you like. You can see him thinking, I'm going to reach for something. And he looks at Jerry. Don't shoot. It's a radio. And he looks to her for like confirmation, like, can I reach for it? She's just going to raise an eyebrow, but nod. He goes into his coat, pulls out like a little walkie-talkie. Now who are you trying to talk to here? Bernard. I'm going to tell him that she sent you. That this is all wrong. I, gra- I grab his shoulder and I say, make sure you convince him, but don't trust Bernard. Don't trust him. He's very, you've, you've planted the seeds of discourse in him. He's like, what? He hits the button. Bernard, it's Trevor. You hear the static. Trevor, where are you? Uh, it's, it's, it's a mistake. There's been a, it's a huge misunderstanding. Uh, these guys, uh, we got the wrong ones. Trevor, where are you? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Pike Farms? Yep. I figured as much. All of you see light a light source go overhead. Easily identifiable as some kind of fire. Goes over you, probably about 25 feet past you, and you hear glass breaking. And the sound of glass breaking is replaced with the familiar sounds of flames engulfing quickly flammable things as part of the field begins to catch fire. Trevor looks behind him. I don't think he cares. He gets up quickly and he looks at Jerry. I, let me talk to him, please. I look at uh, Lance and Jerry. We got to get Didi and get out of here. I can talk to him if you. If what you're telling me is legit. You go talk to him. We got to get this away. Walks out there, limps, sorry, outside. He has his hands up. Leave. He's probably like about 20 feet away from where you guys are at. And he exits the, the, the cornfield. Bernard! Bernard! You can hear the conversation. The fire raging behind you as Trevor says, Bernard! It's me, Trip! And you hear, it sounds like something spinning up and then firing. A very high caliber weapon. Something just rips through him. It's Trip! I would say Sonny's familiar with this sound. This is a minigun. You hear the familiar whirring of engines, and then you hear the bullets pass through something. And then as you assume Trevor's annihilated, you hear it whirring up again. We go. We book it. We go. We book it. We go. <laughs> I'm gonna need, let's call it agility, s- agility sneak. Difficulty of one. Hey, to eat eight. Damn it. I got it. <laughs> Jerry disappears. Sunny <laughs> rolled a crit. And on this show, we gotta respect the crit. So Jerry, we'll start with you. Jerry hears the thing. Sunny says, let's book it. And she ninjas north, I would say northwards, through more cornfield. The fire's at her left side as she passes by it. And she hears the familiar sounds of bullets zipping past her. The sounds of zipping are huge compared to the normal small ones. These are like almost like animals going at high speeds past you. And you look at the blades of the corn stalks just get ripped. 
shredded by this caliber of whatever this thing is. Uh, Lance, you don't get hit by the bullets, but you definitely eat shit and uh, trip at some point near the fire, so we'll get to that in a second. Sunny, you rolled a crit fail. You're about to get hit by this minigun. Oh no. That's fair. Uh, not Sunny. Yeah, who's gonna talk if Sunny's gone? <laughs> I know! <laughs> it's gonna be Jerry and Lance staring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And he never even paid us. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. The minigun is burst and spread, and I roll two effects. as So two hits, and it pops burst and spread twice. Uh, I'm going to say that the burst and spread are extra damage. So one extra damage to Sunny, so it's three to whatever location I'm about to pick. The, the burst is that the additional one damage goes to Lance, who's on the ground, because he also failed the roll. Um... But your complication, being a 20, spread to both of you, I'm going to say, for this instance. So three damage. I'm sorry, Xavier. (laughs) I didn't mean to drag you into into this. I just hit three out of 12 hit hit points. Here comes second perk, Nerd Rage. While your health is reduced to less than a, a quarter of your maximum, you add plus one to your physical damage reduction, plus one to your energy damage reduction, and plus one combat die to, uh, to the damage of all of your attacks. So the damage, you get hit with a bullet, you don't care. The bullets rip through the cornfield. He sees the flesh leave his body from the calib- the size of this high caliber bullet, and immediately his blood begins to boil, and he gets the ring in, in his ears, his vision gets cloudy, worse than when it was all red from his adrenaline rush uh, after fighting the U-Pro officers. It's at this time that Lance's mind goes back to when he was basically just a weapon for the Overseer of Vault 6. A crowd is in a vault hallway. There is a group of about 15 to 20 citizens with signs, with pipes, bottles, all kinds of normal objects found. Lance, along with two other heavily built vault dwellers, both all young, good-looking men, stand between a small horde and the overseer. It is with a sudden and quickness that a bottle flies from the the crowd and collides and shatters on Lance's head, giving him a nice little scar right above the hairline. Blood begins to drip from this small cut. Lance's vision goes blurry here. The crowd stops as they see Lance's eyes flare up. He leaves his position from the front of the line of the guard that was positioned to protect the overseer and quickly marches through the crowd. And instead of stopping him as a group, he he has instilled so much fear in them that they divide and part. Lance reaches what appears to be an old man holding two empty bottles in his other hand. And as he prepares to throw it, he finally gets a glance of Lance's face and the rage. And the old man drops the bottle from sudden fear, but that doesn't stop Lance. As he grabs the old man by the collar, slams him into a steel post nearby, and repeatedly slams him over and over again into the metal post. Bones can be heard cracking to everyone else except Lance, who in his rage only hears a ringing sound as his vision begins to close slowly and slowly with red and black swirls as the old man lifelessly now flails limb limbs going wild as he continually pushes him into the steel beam lance is now brought back to the situation as he stares at his left arm chunks recently being ripped out by this high caliber bullet and bullets still flying past him what 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 would lance do he sees Sonny, he's right there in his field of vision. He sees him on the ground. And his only instinct, his first instinct, is to reach into his medical pocket. He finds a small tablet holder, takes out a buff out. And he just, with his thumb, rapidly clicks it open and just brings it to his mouth and chews down and swallows hard. It the taste is horrible and it seizes up like the vein the, the muscles in his neck seize up immediately he takes the buff out uh, and he can feel like every muscle in his upper body tense up and he just grabs the earth b- between his fingers and brings himself himself up and lunges forward picks up Sonny and just 
runs through the fire, and there's there's no more time for hiding. He just goes. Nice. I love it. So, you took one dosage. I need you to roll one combat dice, please. One. You are not addicted. That means you can take more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, buff out. Reroll 1d20 on all strength and endurance tests, plus three to your maximum HP. I'm going to need you to give me a strength athletics check. Uh, difficulty one to pick up Sunny. Okay. So my strength is 10. Uh, athletics is three, so 13. You scoop him up as you're running. Ugh. Your veins popping out, Sunny. You look over at him as he picks you up, and you just see his neck is just veined out. Uh, you can see the definition in his muscles all have like the. There's the perfect curvature around the biceps, pectorals. Stop. I'm, thirst- I'm thirsty enough. I'm thirsty enough. <laughs> in, in gym terms, now though, he's very vascular, so I don't know if that's your thing. But, uh, yeah, very vascular. <laughs> I mean, I'm a ghoul. Veins are definitely my thing. <laughs> <Am I? laughs> Jerry, you're on the other side of this cornfield, and as the fire spreads worse and worse, you see Lance and Lance run through the fire with a injured son. He comes out of the cornfield. Uh, what are you doing while this is happening? Jerry will run out once she sees uh, Lance and run next to him. I don't know where we're going. (laughs) He's not thinking straight either. He's just running straight and he's got a a navigator uh, riding shotgun. (laughs) Yes, Sonny, what are you saying to to him? God, I don't know. I I think we gotta get out of here, so the closest thing to here is a gate, right? Pike Street Gate. Lance! We, there's a gate up ahead, but we gotta get Dee Dee. We gotta get Dee Dee, Lance! Alright, Lance, here's here's what you gotta do. You're, the gate to get out of the, 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 the settlement is the first thing you see. You hear Sonny say, there's a gate. And then you're, you know, the voice gets kind of garbled because you're on drugs right now. Like, this is, this is like the equivalent of a barbarian rage. Like, it is very tough to take in all the stimuli. But you do hear him mention something about Dee Dee. I leave the choice to you, Xavier. If you head straight right now, you're gonna get out of the settlement, no problem. If you take a left and try to go for Didi, there's gonna be we're gonna get into a chase scene for sure. Lance keeps running for the gate. Okay, Sunny, you think Lance hears you, but then he passes the last street that takes you down the main thoroughfare. It becomes very apparent that Lance's mind is on one mode, and that's survival. You know, you feel like you feel like you're not gonna see Didi for a, a, a while, and that's like at least a feeling deep in your stomach. But we're that, star, we're star crossed. <laughs> you will look at the same moon <laughs> as Lance not only kicks open the the large gate, guards up top are like, "What the hell?" And they see this silhouette of what they think. They're like, "Is that a death claw? What is that?" And they see this large silhouette exit. Jerry's right behind you guys, like, what the hell is happening? As you exit the settlement of Union, you hear those same high caliber bullets hitting steel and iron. I'm beating on Lance's meaty vascular bicep and I'm like screaming, Lance, what are you doing? Dee Dee, we have to go back. Dee Dee, Dee Dee, Dee Dee! I say some time has passed. You guys are west, northwest of Union, a good probably 35, 40 minutes. Lance is slowly (sighs) huffing and puffing with Sonny still in his arms. Sonny, you're very much capable of walking. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) Jerry, you're behind them and you're out of breath. Like, you know Lance is physically capable of stuff like this. But when it comes to endurance, like you probably would have the upper hand, but you're unsure of what the f- how is he still moving? Lance, you stop. You feel like it's safe. Your heartbeat's still elevated. Your body's still in buff out mode. What do you do? Yeah, if it's a safe place, he would probably not talk at all to anyone and start pacing again uh, with his arms crossed, with his hands uh, like under his armpits. 
deep in thought, or at least trying to bring down his heart rate. You are all currently, uh, I would say, in the gutted remnants of a gas station. Or refueling station, I'm sorry. They don't use fossil fuels anymore. They use nuclear-powered stuff. This specific refueling station, there's the convenience store part of it where there were shelves of, you know, snacks and things once, but now have just been picked clean where there's just garbage and refuse laying around. Uh, The front, like the outside section of this refueling station does have the refueling pumps, which have been, one has been knocked over completely. Another one is like, looks like somebody tried to pull it out of the ground. All of you are in here catching your breath. I picture, and tell me if I'm wrong, I picture Sonny and Jerry sitting on one of these uh, these tables. Think of them as like a table with the benches encircling them, kind of like that kind of setup, but indoors. Oh, yeah. Uh, like a ripped up like a ripped up booth kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. You both, both Jerry and Sonny see Lance pacing as he has his hands under his armpits. And I'm going to say just for dramatic effect, you can hear his heartbeat. It's so quiet in here. You can hear his heartbeat. Like it's... I lean over to Jerry, and I'm like, I've never seen him like this. This is no. Jerry's like wide-eyed, like watching a wild animal. Like she's keeping her eyes on Lance. And then whisper back to Sonny, should we be scared? I mean, uh, I'm a little bit scared, but I'm also a little bit turned on. It's kind of working for me, you know? And then Jerry's just gonna look it's, at Sunny. It's all the it's all the veins. It's the vascularity. <sighs> That's in character. That's sign. <laughs> uh, Lance, what's going through your head right now? There's a conflict in that he he would use to feel like ashamed, like after after these kind of moments, uh, regrets and stuff like that. But right now he's not sure that that's the right feeling because like it turned out okay but he's still also like on high alert Every, like there could be a threat anywhere he's still very stressed out so he's just wrestling with like what am I doing like was this the right thing to do you're all very self involved in what's happening here this situation that just occurred so you guys I'm going to say that your awareness is focused on this room uh, and each other. Is that agreeable? For sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'd say it'd be Jerry first because she's normally the one on high alert for this. And then Lance would notice. You hear, Jerry, the familiar sound of something firing and then sizzling. But away. The sound you catch first, but it's the light that Lance and Sunny see from the open windows, or the destroyed windows. It's a flare that has gone up, very familiar to you, which you saw no more than a day ago. And then another flare, but in the northern side. And then another. All of you are now very aware. The flares are positioned in a way where they encircle the building that you are in. And I'd say Jerry's the first to get her weapon, but not before a syringe (laughs) hits her in the chest. It's literally a large, we're talking about a a large syringe. As it hits, it injects you with some sort of blue liquid. Uh, Let's call this endurance, endurance survival difficulty three, please. Do we have any action points? <laughs> we have one. Okay. This is the perfect time to do it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Use it up. I, okay, I have to get eight. I'm gonna spend two luck points. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I have one more luck point. Whatever. Use it. <laughs> it says you cannot re-roll a die that has already no, been re-rolled. You can't re-roll it. Yeah, Damn you did it. You okay. did it in the Jerry, you fall to the ground unconscious. Sonny, you see this and Oh no, Jerry, Jerry, uh, oh, and you get one in your neck. Yeah, okay. Survival endurance, DC of three, please. But we're out of action points. Yeah, we're out of action action points. Out of action points. Nine. I gotta get in, I gotta get three, three below nine. Here we go. What? (laughs) (laughs) No. What in the what? My complication range extended to 18, but this, I'll take this. (laughs) 
I rolled, okay, this has to go in. I rolled three 19s. Boom, boom, boom. Same number, three. Three complications. 19s That's across the board. <laughs> and they're all complications. Fantastic. So, Sonny, you're like, we're really respecting the crit right now. I we have are to. fucking yeah. so respecting the crit. <laughs> To a fault, Sunny quickly looks at the ground, Jerry, and then <laughs> you can't speak. It's like it punctured something. <laughs> and the, one of the three complications is that your charisma checks from now until you get medical attention will be increased by one difficulty because this thing punctured something. <laughs> Lance, you are hit with two of these. I'm not going to make you roll <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to say can canonically the buff out. <laughs> The buff out is keeping you up, and you just. And you're okay, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You're like a rabid Hulk, just <laughs> tearing these things off. More come out, and that's when these figures come in through the doorway, through the back door, through the northern section where the convenience store is. They have these weird guns that have a, kind of like a clip full of these little darts, these medical syringes. You recognize them, obviously, as medical syringes. All these people, there's about eight in total, are wearing patchwork armor that seems to have spikes tubing coming out of it. You've seen this before. Holy shit. This armor is Raider armor, which you are familiar with because of the incident in which Lance crossed the bridge, snuck into a grocery store in an attempt to find some food for his journey, and instead Lance sees other rap members from a different group who had gone out a little before him sitting on their knees, hands tied behind their backs, as men in similar clothing to these who are surrounding you now put a gun behind each of their heads and executed them. And all Lance could do was hold on to a piece of a memento that he carried with him, his hockey jersey. As he bites into it, trying to stop himself from screaming and trying to stop the rage as he watches his friends execute by a much stronger power than him. We see this for a brief second as Lance is pulled back now, filled to the brim like a porcupine with these injections, resisting them as best he can, having to stand still so he can focus. When one of these raiders approaches Lance from behind and hits him with the butt of a rifle. I guess something's never Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crits Wasteland Adventure, Fallout Evergreen. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. It's easy, free, helps other people learn about the show, and we love to read your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or come chat with us in our official Discord server. Jerry is played by Susan Spinader, who you can find on Instagram at Suze Laluz. Lance Burnett is played by Xavier Trudeau Deschen who can be found on Twitter at XavierTD. Sonny Takase is played by me, your host, Ian Duncan, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at iDunks. Our guest GM for this game is Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at A.E. Herrera, or on his Twitch channel, WadeWolf10. The original music in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose info and credits can be found in the episode notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to hear more of their work and tell them how much you like their music in our show. Our outro song is Some Things Never Changed by Gavin Dunn. You can hear more of his work on Bandcamp and YouTube at Miracle of Sound. The Fallout 2D20 RPG system is licensed by Bethesda and published by Modifius Entertainment. Special thanks to our friends at Modifius for donating prizes to our giveaways for this campaign. You can learn more and grab your own copy of the official Fallout RPG by visiting modifius.net slash respect the crit. Special thanks to the team at Fallout Cascadia for use of their music. You can learn more about this incredible, ambitious Fallout 4 mod at falloutcascadia.com. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the wasteland.
We're doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's an injection. I guess steroids is a syringe, right? When you there's a picture on the Fallout wiki, and it's pills. There are actually suppositories. So, could you please describe how those go in? Oh, <laughs> oh. really just quickly ah! through the pants. There's no time. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's denim in there now. It's okay. Damage reduction. <laughs> I love it. 